Hi guys, welcome back to the Financial Interest YouTube channel. My name's Dan. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, then please consider subscribing if you want to see content which is personal finance, uh, stock analysis, and also kind of value investing uh, tips as well. So in this week's video, we're going to talk about return on equity versus return on invested capital. So these are two kind of key metrics when we're trying to um, evaluate a company and how how they how much profits they're generating from from the capital they have invested in them. So this is part of another playlist, which is my invest in terms playlist. I'm starting to build this up over time. So hopefully eventually we'll get like a nice library of different invest in terms that I've got kind of a brief explanation to. So first we need to look at what is return on equity. So the return on equity is a measure of how profitable the company is and how well it's using its um, investor shareholders capital to actually generate a return. So obviously what we're looking for here is kind of the, the highest returns possible. So companies can generate money in a number of different ways. The first way is through shareholder equity. So this is money that's invested from shareholders or they can also take out loans um, from the banks and things like that. That's another way they can uh, get access to capital to, to try and put money back into the business to grow it and improve the returns. So in terms to find the return on equity, we need to take the net income divided by the shareholder equity. So equity is the amount of money that's been invested by shareholders. So we can take a look at an example here. If there is one million dollars that's been invested by shareholders and the returns or the profit for that year are one hundred thousand dollars. So we take the one hundred thousand and divide it by one million, which gets us a return on equity of ten percent. So one of the downsides to return on equity is that it doesn't take into account any debt that the company's taken on. So now we're going to go and look at the, the next one, which is return on invested capital. And that's kind of one of the key measures because that also takes into account any, any debt obligations that the company has. So what is return on invested capital or ROIC? So return on invested capital is a measure of how efficiently a company management is at allocating money to generate returns. This is the total capital the company has to generate a profit, including the shareholder equity, any debt that's been taken on as well. This is an important metric to assess the company's current performance versus its previous performance as well, and also to compare similar companies in the same sector. So we can take a look at the kind of equation to calculate the return on invested capital. So we've got the net income minus the dividend divided by the invested capital. So the invested capital could be the shareholders equity plus any debt that's been taken on as well. So this will give us a figure of the total capital that the company has available to kind of put into the business. And following on from the same example of before, if we're making a profit of $100,000 and now this time we've actually got $1 million of equity and $1 million of debt, then we add those two together. So we're taking the $100,000 and dividing it by the $2 million and that gives us a return on invested capital of 5%. So what we want to do when we're looking at return on invested capital is we need to kind of compare how this is year on year for the company we're looking at. So you want to see that this is kind of either stayed the same or is actually increasing. So what we're looking for here is a, at least a 10% uh, ROIC year on year. So we also take this when we're trying to compare it to other companies as well. So you always need to look against the historic rate of the company and also against its uh, competitor set within the same industry as well. So I'll keep it with my usual two examples. I quite often use um, Facebook and Alphabet because they kind of compete in the same space really in terms of um, where they make their revenues, which is digital advertising. So now I'm going to take a look at uh, Phil Town's Rule 1 toolbox. This is like a really good place to get information from. It's, it's all in one place. Uh, it actually costs around $30 a month, but it's definitely well worth it. And they also have a free month as well when you first sign up. So first we'll go and look at Facebook. And Facebook has a seven-year average ROIC of 15.6%. And then if we go down, we can see the five year is 18.3, the three year is 22, and last year is 
So we can see that this is really good because it's kind of improved over time. For the last year, it was 18.3%, and then the seven-year average was 156 So we're seeing a growth there as well. And Facebook has not taken on any debt, so this is why the return on equity and the return on invested capital are actually the same. So if you see debt get incorporated into that, then that's when you start to see the, the numbers will change. So your return on equity will be the same, but your return on invested capital will actually become lower because it's got debt taken into account as well. So this is actually a good performance from, from uh, Facebook. And now let's go and take a look at Google to keep in mind that we're looking at a company within the same industry. So if we're picking between two companies, this is a kind of good way we might use to, uh, to measure the difference in performance between those companies. So here we can see that Google's ROIC as a seven year average is 13.8%. And we're gonna use the seven years because Facebook didn't have 10 years of data because it only, it only IPO'd in 2012. So we can see that the seven year average was 13.8, the five year average 13.7, three year average of 13.9, and last year was 16.7. So this is actually really good results as well. This is very consistent, which is what, what we want to see. So we can see it's hovering always around the kind of 13.8, 13.7 mark up to just under 14. And obviously last year we can see that they did 16.7%, so a slight increase in the performance there. So I'll put the table on the screen now and we can compare the, the difference between uh, Facebook and Google on top of each other. So from this, we can see that Facebook performs better in every metric that we're showing here. For the seven year average, it's improved 15.6 to 13.8. Then the five year average, Facebook 18.3 to Google 13.7. And then the three years, 22% to 13.9. And the last year, 18.3 to 16.7. So this would kind of look like we're getting um, kind of a better performing company if we were to buy Facebook, but obviously nothing is ever that simple. We need to consider like a lot of other different metrics, such as the how the current price is, our margin of safety, and also look at the different um, future growth rates of the companies or project the future growth rates of the companies. So now let's look at the key points from the return on invested capital, which we're, which we're looking for as an investor. So the first point is we, we use the ROIC to kind of see how efficiently the company can generate profits from the capital it has to work with. And in this situation, we're looking for the kind of highest number possible. So we're looking for an ROIC of at least 10%. And this amount actually should, well, it should be greater than 10% and it should kind of consistently grow or at least stay the same. We don't want to see the return on invested capital kind of shrinking as the years go on because that might tell us that there's there's kind of a problem in the company being able to efficiently use the money it has at its disposal and when we compare the ROIC we should be looking kind of comparing it to historic rates within the same company and also comparing it to its peers within the same industry so you don't want to kind of look at look across industry so there's no point for me to look at Facebook and then look at say for example Texas Roadhouse because one one is in digital advertising and the other is a restaurant so you would get completely different different results so if I'm looking at Texas Texas Roadhouse maybe I should be looking at other restaurants like perhaps Cheesecake Factory you need to kind of you need to compare apples to apples with this kind of thing otherwise you just won't get accurate results so I hope you enjoyed the video please hit like and also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and like, let me know in the comments, do you use the return on equity and the return on invested capital before making any of your investment decisions? I'm interested to know, so please leave that down in the comments. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.